A few moments later. Hello guys! Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and I finally bring you a new video today. First of all, I am really sorry for the delay in a new video, but I've been really sick. I've been and I am kind of sick. My voice is quite better now, but it was horrible in these days. Um, I, had, I had the flu, so really hard to speak. But whatever, today we have an overclock in video. This time about the Ryzen 7 1700. I know this is quite old, expected of me, but I'm doing this because look at these prices, Jesus, Ryzen 7 1700 has been going low on prices and the prices nowadays are really crazy, for example around $140 for Ryzen 5 1700, maybe less, maybe more, depending on the country of course, but the prices are really low and people are buying it. So people are buying it and I'm doing this overclocking tutorial on, in this case, uh, in 2019 with newer buyers uh, and that's it. <laughs> Cringe apart, that's it. So I'm gonna show you my settings, not like a super uper duper duper overclocking tutorial, <laughs> overclocking tutorial, but anyway, I'm just going, gonna show you my settings and uh, I'll, giving, I'll be giving you some advices in between. That's all. And well, without any further delays, let's go to the overclocking part. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video if you enjoy it. See you soon. So guys, first of all, sorry for the, um, the image quality, because I recorded this with my phone, because uh, my computer is on the other side of the, the room and I don't want to move the computer so, so I can use a cable, so I can record the bias. Um, I simply didn't want to do that, sorry, but the, the point is, you can watch and you can see the, um, the profiles, you, <laughs> the profiles, not the profiles, you can see the... Um, uh, the settings and that's the most important point of it so okay first thing you need to go to OC settings you have the OC explore mode and it will be on normal mode um, usually of course I now have it on expert and you too have to um, to choose the expert in order to overclock manually the CPU core ratio will be on auto like the core performance boost and the down core uh, control but leave it on manual you can simply write 39 and you'll be okay as for the XMP usually if you have a, a 3000 megahertz RAM you'll have two profiles the 2667 and the 2933 megahertz simply leave it on disable and use the manual overclock as you can see here you have several settings I have over overclocked my RAMs from th 3000 megahertz to 3200 megahertz sorry um, um, and yes, yes, they most of them, the 3000 MHz CL15 can indeed overclock. Um, and I did it. Okay, as for the, um, now you have the, um, the timings, as for the timings, I also messed around with the timings, the RAMs would, would have been, I think the RAMs were something like CL15, 17, 17, I did 16, 16, 16, 16, 26, and you need to go down in the RAM overclocking, you need to go down to gear mode. Um, this is a very important part. On the gear mode part, okay, let's, okay, now. On the gear mode part, um, this is quite funny because these are important for RAM overclocking. Gear mode will let the, the RAM downclock just for a second if it is needed. The thing is, most of RAMs won't be able to do 1T, it, they will be able to do 2T only and with gear down mode uh, you can actually use 1T and it will be something like 1.5T which will be faster and will have less latency than 2T uh, even with gear mode disabled so uh, gear mode enabled and 1T is better than gear mode disabled with 2T the best of all, of course, is gear mode disabled with 1T, but again, most of RAMs won't be able to do it. As for the power down mode enable, I usually let it disable because I don't want the, the, the RAM voltage to be, 
going down and up just when needed so I want my RAM voltage to be fixed. As for the Proc ODT, now this is a really important setting. So on a later bias, on newer bias per se, you don't have to mess around almost Almost in every BIOS you don't, want, you don't want and you don't have to mess around with Proc ODT anymore. But in older BIOS this was a must. So the, um, the Proc ODT default settings of Ryzen is 53.3 ohms if, I, if I'm not wrong, I think. It is 53.3 ohms um, and the values to have the, the, memory, the, memory, the memory overclock stable are from 48 ohms to 80 ohms usually 48 to 68.6 ohms most of the times it is not higher is better it's just simply um just simply one ram may like 48 ohms one ram kit may like 60 ohms another ram kit may like 68.6 ohms but usually higher frequencies like higher ohms that's it okay moving on uh, let's see, okay, going down, Proco DT, blah, 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 okay, more timings, and again, the, um, the 1T and 2T, just let me go back, 1T and 2T is, is here, so common rate, see, I have 1T, but with this kit, I can't use 2T if I don't have the gear, uh, sorry, I can't use 1T if I have the gear mode disabled um, and I will force in a, it will force enable the 2T and it will be slower. Now we have on the digit all power we have the load line calibration. You, uh, I usually mess around only with the CPU load line calibration. You have mode 1, 2 or 3. I usually select the mode 3 because it is the, um, the, um, the, load, the load voltage, the load CPU voltage will be more or less the voltage you select on the um, on the bias most of the times you select the voltage on bias and when the um, oh my microphone went down okay okay way better sorry guys most of the times when you select the voltage on the um, on the bias once the CPU goes on load so once the CPU goes stressed once you are gaming once you are rendering for example uh, the voltage will go higher because of the load line calibration and most of the times you won't need it because if you are doing the voltage manually you won't really need it unless you want to do it of course so I leave it on mode 3 in order to um, to have um, the same voltage on windows on load as I choose on BIOS as for the other settings I don't really mess around with them even the CPU, uh, SOC and etc. Now, I have my CPU at 39, so uh, 3.9 GHz as you've seen, and my voltage in this case is 1.375. Um, this will make the BIOS use 1.39.2, uh, 1.392, sorry, um, because that's how the BIOS works, but this here, 1.39, is the real voltage, the real deal. Um, so yeah, kind of messy. Oh, once again, as for the, the CPU North Bridge, um, or the SOC voltage, I'm using 1.13, which usually, which usually makes it to 1.15. I usually leave it on 1.15, which is my, my standard per se. Yeah, that's my standard of the, the SOC voltage. And I need 1.392 volts in order to maintain the 3.9 GHz overclock. So if you don't have a decent cooler, don't try this because your CPU, your CPU will heat a lot. And well, mostly if you are on the stock cooler, let's try something like 3.8 GHz with uh, something around 1.3 to 1.35 volts, which will work, I guarantee it. Um, as for the RAM voltage, I leave it always, always, and when I say always, I say always. Once I overclock my RAMs, I usually leave at 1.40 to 1.45. This is my standard for RAM overclocking. Usually I leave it at 1.45 for the beginning, uh, for the beginning, sorry, and then, if I do, and then, Jesus. 
and then if I don't need so so much voltage I will decrease it um, as low as I can and that, that's not much science there's not much science about it so that's mostly it now on the CPU features since I want the max performance I, I can get, I don't want power saving features, so I will disable all the power saving features. The first feature is global C state control, of course. Uh, then we have the spread spectrum, which I disable always in order to, to have better overclocking stability. This is a must always. Um, I also disable AMD cool and quiet because I want my CPU to be always at top notch for example at idle the power usage will be almost null the difference per se if you have let's say it's at 1.3 gigahertz or at 3.9 gigahertz the difference will be quite minimal uh, and the precision boost like seen before will always be disabled also because we are manually overclocking and I don't want one core or two to peak to 4 or 4.1 gigahertz I don't want that so this is this is mainly it there's nothing much much more to say just go to integrated peripherals peripherals sorry peripherals uh, and go to the HPT high precision event timer and disable it I also made a video about this HPT on versus HPT off on Windows and it already made um, made a, a decent difference so if you are doing it on BIOS the difference will be even greater so just disable the HPT because you don't need it that's it and well guys thanks a lot for watching really thanks a lot for watching don't forget hit like subscribe and share the video because that really helps a lot if you have any kind of doubts for example go to the comment section comment there and I will reply as fast as I can also I'll leave you just with um or better better if you want to see these this PC uh, this PC running with this overclock how it runs just watch this video um, because it is really good uh, video about this build it is a really nice video and I do I do some benchmarks um, I show the metrics, so the temperatures, etc, etc, if you want to see them. Thanks a lot one more time, and see you in the next video.